Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather. Thank you so much for stopping by today. Today we're going to be doing my March wrap up. For the month, month of March, I read seven books, which isn't my greatest reading month, but I was also in a really bad reading slump. And one of the books that I read put me in that reading slump, so we'll talk about it in just a little bit. Um, some of these books you have already seen me talk about in pre previous vlogs, so I won't talk much about those. The first book that I ended up reading was Brutal Youth by Anthony Bransomkin, and then I read this book for a secret TBR video that is going to be coming up and that you've heard me talk about for a couple months now. So it should be going up here pretty soon, like within the next month or two. And this is a Dark Academia book about a boarding school called St. Michael's. And St. Michael's does not have a very good reputation. Kids are just kind of dumped at this school and there's a lot of bullying. There's a lot of hazing. Um, of the younger students and this book follows a couple of characters. Um, I really don't know how to rate this, like I didn't know how to rate this book because I did not like the bullying aspect, I did not like the hazing aspect, I did not like the way that the, uh, the way that the adults acted in this book. It was just very irritating and it was being a teacher myself it made me very, very upset that, th that things were just swept under the rug and the kids basically ran the school. Um, and it it was just one of those books that I had a hard time reading, but I could not put this book down. I could not put it down. It, it just kept me captivated and it kept me wanting to read and continue to read and continue to read and continue to read. I ended up giving it four stars just because I liked the writing style. I thought that it was written very well. Um, although I didn't particularly, again, like the content of the book itself, I liked the way that it wrapped up and I liked the way that the author handled situations, although the situations weren't, like, it's hard to explain, the situations did not come to a full close, if that makes sense. Um, like they weren't, it, it, this is not, the situations weren't handled very well. Does that make sense? But, I don't know, this, this is one of those controversial books because I didn't, I didn't really enjoy the reading experience just because of what's inside of it, but I liked it because of what it was saying like it was saying that parents it was saying that teachers that adults need to step up and take care of business because if not kids specifically at the school are going to run it and it's true and then we have some younger characters that step up and they take care of business so Yep, that was this book. I ended up giving it four stars. I had to have no idea if I explained that well at all, but this book is very hard to explain. If you're looking for a dark academia and you aren't triggered by bullying or hazing or anything like that, pick this book up. I think you would enjoy it, maybe. Again, it's not it's not one of those books that you're gonna be like, Oh my god, yes, this is amazing. You're gonna be like Wow. These people suck. That's how you're gonna be. The next book I ended up reading was a completely different genre, which I enjoyed, and this is Stranger in Your Arms by Lisa Claypless. Claypis. This is the first Lisa Claypless book that I've ever read, and I ended up giving this 3.5 out of 5 stars. I thought that it had super important conversations. This is a book about a woman named Laura, and her husband has passed away or people think that he has passed away. He supposedly died in a shipwreck when he went overseas and before he went overseas he was not a good husband. He cheated on her. He treated her terribly. He had a mistress the entire time that they were married and then after he died she had her independence sort of because her husband's uncle took over his estate and she was basically told I mean, she was able to do what she wanted to do, but when it came to money, 
he had control over that. So they just kind of jumped in and took over his whole estate. And then someone pops up out of nowhere claiming to be her husband. And she's very confused because she doesn't know if she trusts this person. They look a lot alike, but she doesn't know if it's her husband or not. So she's very confused. But she doesn't want to be near this person, but she's attracted to him. And this, I, I don't know, I thought that, like I said, I thought the story itself was important and it had an important conversation about relationships and it had important conversations about how to treat a spouse well. Um, but I didn't feel the connection that I wanted to feel with either of the characters. I thought that it was just an okay story. Uh, Laura, I didn't really care for her character and I didn't really care for Hunter's character either. And, I don't know, I just wasn't connected with this book. And I think that it was just because I was in a, was in a kind of a slumpy slump in March. But, yep. So I ended up reading that 3.5 out of 5 stars. I will read more of Lisa Claybliss because I heard that her books are fabulous. And I don't want this book to be my saying yes or no to reading her. So I'm going to give her another chance. And then the next book I read is A Hot Mess. I read this book for the historical Hellions um, book club that Jess from Pre Peace Love Books uh, hosts and Samantha from, I believe, I can't remember Samantha's uh, YouTube name. But anyways, I ended up reading Once and Always by Judith McKnight and I did not like this book. I ended up giving this book two stars. Um, when cross off was their cousins or distance cousins, and that kind of freaks me out. No hate to you do what you want to do, but for me, it was a, it was a no go. Jason is a butthole, he's just mean for no reason. I mean, he has a reason, but I don't think that it's an excuse to be a jerk. There's also a scene with a consent issue rape. I'm going to go ahead and say what it is. It's rape. And that just like sealed the deal for me. I did end up reading all of this book. I did not like their relationship. I thought that Victoria had to try way too hard to get Jason's love that she wanted. And I just did not like this book at all. At all. I, mm -mm. Nope. Nope, nope, nope. I can tell the difference between, I think this book was published in 87, 1987. I can tell the difference between 87 style historical romance to pre like right now historical romance and I didn't know. I want to throw this book out of the window. That tells you how it is. Alright and then the next couple of books I ended up reading were on my Kindle. Um, there were arcs that I have had for a while and these are a few books that you've already heard me talk about so I'm just going to kind of speed through this part. The first book that I read is What If the Stars Don't Die by Ivy Oaks. I ended up giving this four stars. This is about Dante after he loses both of his parents. And he is a teenager and he goes to live with his Aunt Sarah. And his Aunt Sarah has also lost her husband. But it was a while ago. So this story is a lot about grief. And it's about their relationship or as a, as a nephew an aunt and nephew and they both help each other with their grief. There's also a cute little love story in here between Dante and what is her name? Sorry, and Maggie. And I just thought that it was a really cute high school relationship and I thought that Dante and his Aunt Sarah's relationship was very beautiful because they did help each other out and she's spunky and he's just kind of laid back and very shy but she helps bring his personality out and he helps her kind of just like cope with chilling a little bit so bringing it down to no level and I'm giving it four stars if you're looking for a nice contemporary read um uh, it's a Y book um if you're looking for that I would highly recommend picking this up and Ivy Oaks is and indie author so support your indie authors the next book i read is layla by colleen hoover and you've heard me talk about this if you watched my kindle clear out readathon video 
and I ended up giving this four stars. I This book was a surprise. I knew nothing going into it, and I think that's the best way to go into it. It does have a, it's a sp suspense, romance, paranormal twist to it, and I thought that it was really good. Um, and that's all I'm going to tell you. Leeds and Layla, they have an instant connection when they first meet, and that connection just continues on with the book. And that's all I'm going to tell you. Read it if you like it. And then I read The Low Country Bride by, by Press Lasia Williams. And I said her name all through that Kindle Clear Out video and I apologize so much. But I ended up giving this four stars. I thought that this was a really good contemporary slow burn, like very, very slow burn romance about um, Maya and, and Derek. I'm sorry. I feel like it's been like five months since I've read my March books because it's been... It was a it was a very very slow month for me, but um, I thought that Maya and Derek, their friendship at first was very thought that it was very smart of both of them to do that because they're both grieving with things. Maya has a secret; she has sickle cell disease that she doesn't want people to know about because she doesn't want people to coddle her and treat her like she's fragile she wants people just to treat her like she's supposed like like she's a human basically um and Derek he is grieving his the loss of his wife and he's also kind of having trouble being a single dad with a teenage daughter because they don't really click all that much so you see a lot of um you see a lot of family things going on too Maya is very close with her father she has lost her mother and he he is now dating, and so she's kind of having to deal with that as well. It's a very, very positive thing, though, with Maya and her dad. She wants her dad to be happy, and she has been trying to get him to date for a while, and he's finally doing it. So Maya is a wedding dress designer, and she works in New York City, and the reason why she goes down to see her dad is because her dad has had an accident, and he broke his hip, and she's moving back home for a little bit to um, help him out. So there's that father-daughter relationship going on there. It's very, very sweet. It reminded me of my dad and me in my relationship with my dad. And I thought it, it was just like me. Father-daughter relationships are like so sweet to me. And then Derek and his daughter, they run his um, late mother's bridal shop. And Derek really doesn't know what to do because he's in, he was in the military and he's just kind of like, I'm totally lost. I have no idea what to do with this shop. So, yeah. So him and Maya meet at the shop when she's trying to sell her designs because her, her boss told her that she has two weeks of vacation and after that she's not going to get paid. So she's trying to figure out how to get paid. But that's basically the story. You see Maya and Derek's relationship evolve. Again, they become friends at first, and then that's and then after they become friends, and after they find out each other's secrets, then they form a romance, or and it's very slow burn, and but it's very respectful. Like they're they're very respectful of each other's wishes, of each other's dreams. They are very supportive of each other. They are an older couple. Um, so that was very enjoyable to read about and if you're looking for a very 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 low angst romance that has a lot of family orientation in it as well then I think that you would really really like this book. I thought it was a really good read so that's that. And then the last book that I read for the month of March is The Afterlife of the Party by Liam Perez and this is a YA fantasy a piece of fuzz flying around. So why a fantasy book? I gave this three stars. <sighs> I liked some aspects of this book and some of them I did not like at all. Um, being an adult, reading YA. This is why I don't read a lot of YA now. I see a lot of things that really just I don't like in YA. Um, so this book is about 
Tansy and she is a witch and this book just opens up with every there's magical beings there's just regular people like me and you um Tansy's lineage of she she's in a lineage of witches so her mother was a, her mother's a witch or was a witch her grandmother's a witch she lives with her grandmother because her mother took off um, there's a secret about her mother that you find out later in the book. And then Tansy's best friend, best friend Skylar, asks her to go to a concert for these people called the Drainers and their rock band. And then we find out that they are vampires. And when it got to that part, and then it got to all of the scenery, and it got to the way that the people were acting, I automatically knew what was going to happen in this book. It's very predictable to me. But saying that as being an adult, if I would have read this when I was 18, 19, or 20 years old, I think I would have eaten this book up because I it or maybe I wouldn't. I don't really know. I have conflicting feelings about this book because it, in hindsight, this book talks about human trafficking. It talks about grooming. It talks about all the different things that a lot of young people don't pay attention to. And that was a big part of this book. Skylar is super lucky to have Tansy in her life because if she didn't, Skylar would have just been gone. I'll go ahead and say that. But there is a little bit of a romance in this as well because Tansy and... I forgot his name. I'm sorry. Um, Tansy and Vaughn. So Tansy and Vaughn have been friends for a really long time. They both have crush. They've both had crushes on each other for a while. Um, but Vaughn's always had a girlfriend. Tansy's always been scared to tell her true feelings. So you see their relationship evolve. I really liked that part of the book. Again, I ended up giving this book three stars. I thought that it was okay. I did think that the author handled the human trafficking and the grooming very well. And I thought, I think that younger people who are in this age range would enjoy this book because of the fantastical elements to it. And, but I don't know if they would understand what's going on because there's really there's not a trigger warning before this book and I think that there should be but with that being said it was an okay book and I do plan on reading the other books in the series because I heard that from the reviews that I've read I have heard that they are pretty good so I do plan on reading this book or the reading the other books in the series but that is what I read for the month of March. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you were planning on reading any of these books or if you've even heard of these books. Um, let me know down below. Subscribe if you have not already. And if you have any recommendations that you would like for me to do, let me know down below. Um, I am going to be doing a recommendations video pretty soon because one of you have asked me to do it. And I am gonna do it for you because thank you for watching but yep yeah, okay that's all and I hope that you have a fantastic day weekend whenever you're watching this and yep yeah, okay bye